In this video, I'm going to uh, show what I built that 1000 watt xenon arc lamp into. I built it into a, a sort of searchlight housing. And uh, this is the power supply for the unit. I took a 100 amp uh, arc welder, which is basically a constant current supply, and kind of reworked it just in minor ways and built it into this box. And I added ampere and voltmeter gauges to the front so I can keep track of what's going on. And the only control on this power supply is a single knob which controls the current setting. Uh, the open circuit voltage is about 80 volts, 70 or 80 volts. And when it's running the arc lamp, uh, the voltage is about 20 volts. So 50 amps at 20 volts is, is the, uh, the lamp's rating. The arc welder was originally a, a 40. Uh, they're available on eBay. It was about $100, $110 or $20. And uh, I've never actually used it for welding, so I can't tell you how good it is for that. There's front of it there, arc TIG inverter. I mean, it's, yeah, so it's an inverter, a constant current supply. It's a little cramped in there, but um, you can kind of see the basic idea. Under this, this is just a duct to move some air through some heat sinks that are under here. There's a bunch of FETs or, or switching transistors or something, and uh, it pulses power through this large transformer, and then from the transformer it goes through a an inductor to smooth out the pulses coming through the transformer. And then I also added that large bank of capacitors there. Uh, when I first hooked this thing up to the arc lamp, kind of as is, uh, the, 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 arc, the lamp visibly flickered. And it wasn't a flicker at 60 hertz, it was like a, a wild arc. Like it, was, it had a lot of high frequency in it, which is exactly what it had. The uh, switching uh, frequency is 20 kilohertz or something like that. So the caps actually worked very well. And I just put a whole bank of them together, so that's a huge amount of energy storage there. Uh, I also changed the inductor. This, this was the original inductor, and it has about eight or nine turns on this uh, toroid uh, ferrite coil. And I added a few turns, but I think this part may actually have to be changed, because this wire is insulated, and it gets pretty hot when it's got 50 amps going through it for a while, so I may have to change that or add a fan or something. The box itself is uh, just a rack mount uh, computer case or something that I got at the surplus store and the meters are off of eBay. They're old analog meters but they're actually new production from China. Uh, just one cooling fan at the moment and I used the original welding cable. Actually these cables came from a um, a battery, uh, a battery box for a car, like a jump starter type battery, and the actual jacks and the, um, the cables are welding cables. So here's the actual lamp housing. I'll show you inside and, and you can see the arc lamp in a minute. But first I'm going to talk about this starter circuit. So starting an arc lamp is actually fairly difficult. You need a, a very high power, low voltage supply, 50 amps at 20 volts. But then you also need a starting pulse of about 20 to 30 kilovolts and you have to build this such that the two power supplies don't interact with each other and that's achieved through this starting circuit. Uh, so the reason the starting circuit is placed right on the side of the lamp housing is that that 30 kilovolt pulse is kind of hard to contain so the shorter the distance of wire between the starting circuit and the lamp the better. So in this case I just mounted it right on the side and the um, Part of the starting circuit is this automotive ignition coil, which produces, you know, 10 kilovolts maybe or something like that. And it stores up energy in this high voltage capacitor and then fires through this spark gap. And after firing through the spark gap, there's a pulse that goes through this uh, toroidal transformer that I wound myself. So there's about four or five turns of, of high voltage wire from the um, ignition coil circuit and then there's about eight turns of of high current wire coming from the power supply to the arc lamp. So this does a couple things. One, it steps up the voltage even higher because there's you know a two to one or three to one turns ratio on that transformer and it also electrically isolates the uh, ignition coil circuit from the high power lamp drive circuit. 
The ignition coil is driven by a standard household dimmer. I just cracked open the box and this is what it looks like inside. It's your basic triax circuit and it fires the uh, ignition coil straight off of 120 volts AC and it uses this motor starting cap as a current limiting device. Uh, this works way better than any 12 volt supply I've built for ignition coils and uh, has the benefit that you don't need a 12 volt transformer or something in there. So that's cool. This capacitor is to try to prevent uh, the high voltage 30 kilovolt starting pulse from going back down the line to the uh, high current supply. I already blew up one of those welders. Maybe not because of this reason. I had some other problems with that circuit, but um, this capacitor goes across the line so that a, a, a spike coming back from the starting circuit hopefully won't make it in, in its 30 kilovolt form to the high current supply. So here's a view inside the lamp housing. I've got it set up with the anode uh, in the back. I'm not exactly sure if it's a convention or not, um, but I did it that way because uh, the focal length of that parabolic reflector worked out better if the anode was in the back. So that's how I have it set up. And uh, I made this um, phenolic plastic insulator there so that both sides of the lamp are insulated from the metal housing. I thought that would be important because the 30 kilovolt starting pulse might uh, be an issue if <laughs> one side of the lamp was connected directly to the housing. And I've also took pains to make sure that there was no close metal, even though it looks kind of close, there's, there's actually a fair bit of space. Okay, so let's fire this thing up. Uh, first step I'm going to turn on, there's a cooling fan mounted on the back of the housing, so I'm going to start that up. You may not be able to hear me, so I'm just going to turn it on now.